those that are ignorant of philosophy blame everyone else. Those beginners in philosophy blame themselves. And the masters of philosophy blame no one. And what you just said of someone being unaware or a woman being unaware that she's in control of her own emotions, she can attract to herself the kind of experiences in the world that she wants. She can ask of her man and come to her man with ways that help draw him into seeing her. Yeah. Right. But many men, including me in the past, guys, in 2015, so many men say that, well, the woman, the wo woman in my life has blamed me for everything. That was my experience. I was the bad guy. Um, I was the one that was supposed to make her feel good. Mm. And it didn't seem as though she was taking responsibility for herself. Would you say that that, how would you, how would you bring that into consideration of what we talk about stoic philosophy and our three forms of confidence and our spiritual mindsets of that we fuel ourselves from the inside? Do you think that that's, you know, running rampant in culture right now? Do you think that women aren't exposed to this? Do you think that this is a uniquely masculine type of, way of thinking, you know, take us a step into what you see with women in modern culture right now. I think there can be in, in societies and culture, you can get on the bandwagon of a certain thought and belief. Um, I don't like to jump on those. <laughs> <laughs> um, I try to, I want to stay off of those. And you know, I, if I go back to kind of biology and you, Jeff, talk about like in relationship, there's you, there's her, and there's the relationship. In an evolutionary place, in a biological place, a woman's always going to have part of her self-sourcing from that space between you. It's, it is part of her identity. It is part of her relationship. So to herself. And I don't think she will ever be a fully like perfectly formed you know she'll always be wanting to touch into that and into relationship into yeah and the, so i think because of that you know you can feel in, inadequate because you can feel that part of yourself or you can feel entitled that this this space between us is supposed to make me feel good and then rage, blame, judgment, resentment um, becomes almost like an addictive thought pattern um, that I can see wow. and feel. So. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool that a woman's going to feel that the relational space is a part of her. Yeah, and I, I've tried for, you know, 20 years to pretend that that's not true for me because of stoic philosophy and reading and self-help and it's, it's coming to the point of knowing that it is okay that in my feminine energy, the space between us is also part huh. of my identity and how I source myself. So. Well, that makes me think of David Data and John Wineland's that the masculine is about freedom and the feminine, masculine or feminine within all of us, right? But the masculine for the man is about freedom and the feminine is about love and connection. Yeah. And so the, the feminine within us wants to be connected and feel full, filled with love. Yeah. Within all of us. Yeah. And the masculine wants freedom. So, well, that's, that's another topic too that I want to push into maybe another time is that how women are so animated in their masculine nowadays to be successful in career in capitalism. That's expected is to be sort of in that masculine achieving sphere in the world. Uh, and so therefore, therefore they want more freedom. Women, if they're animated in their masculine, want more freedom nowadays than maybe in the past. Yeah. And that's clashing up against this want for love and connection. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> <It's like being laughs> pulled in two totally different directions, trying to ride two horses at once. And we all know that if those horses are not perfectly in sync. That's, it could be a very painful experience. <laughs> sure.